Mine is a lot like the weather. The days when it's calm, pleasant, a good person to be around. The other days when it's stormy, erratic. It's important that you learn how to deal with the stormy and erratic days. You wait until everything is nice and calm before you meditate. You don't get really much practice in understanding the mind, shaping the mind. Getting out of it, getting it out of an unskillful state. This is what right effort is all about. And as the Buddha says, it starts with desire. The desire to do what's skillful. You hold on to that, even if it's not getting immediate results. That's a skillful desire. It's part of the path. And of course, you want to do it skillfully as well. A skillful state comes up, and you try to deny it, you push it away. It's going to come right back. Or if it doesn't come right back, you replace it with another unskillful state, another problem. That doesn't help at all. This is why it is necessary to learn how to sit with an unskillful state for a while, partly to develop patience. But primarily to understand it. Watch it as it comes and goes. This requires, of course, at least part of your mind is not taken over by that unskillful state. There is a quiet corner someplace in there. You can establish it just by the way you breathe. Look for a good, quiet way to breathe, a relaxing or refreshing way to breathe. And even though lots of things are storming around in the mind, you can. You can still breathe. The storms in the mind don't wipe out the breath. If they did, you would die. The breath is there, and you can make it comfortable. And then starting from that foundation, you can look into that mind state. Watch it. Is it as steady as you think it is? It comes in its ways. It has its gusts, just like the wind today. Then it'll die down. Comes again and then dies down. You can pose the question when it comes, what comes along with it? And when it dies down, what just disappeared? As the Buddha said, everything you need to know in the practice is immediately available to your awareness right here, right now. You don't have to go assuming anything underground or lying behind the scenes. Just watch for what's happening and see how certain things happen together. What you usually find is that the unskillful mind state is accompanied by some assumptions. This is where the teaching on perception comes in. The word perception, or word sanya, has lots of different meanings. One is simply the label you apply to things. Another is the assumptions you make about them. And you might want to look into those assumptions as they come into the mind. Because what they usually do is they tell you, you've got to do something about this. Something comes up in the thought, something that makes you angry. We've got to do something about it. Or if you start desiring something, something in the mind, say, yeah, that's something really worth desiring. Those are the assumptions you've got to look for and see what other assumptions lie under them. 
For instance, if there's something you want, it's something you crave, you, you've got to get it. If you don't get it, you're not really alive. That's one assumption. But this is something that each of us has to find, him or herself. What are the assumptions that cause us to go along with the greed, go along with the anger, the lust, the envy, the pride? Whatever the problem is. You have to look at those assumptions and realize that they're wrong view. They're creating a lot of unnecessary stress and suffering. This is what the Buddha focused on again and again. It's, it's the unnecessary stress that we cause ourselves. And all too often we think we have to do it for one reason or other, whatever the reasons are we've picked up from our families, our schools, TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, the internet. There's all kinds of crazy assumptions out there about what is a meaningful way to live a human life and what's a good way to live your human life and how you, what you've got to do in order to be happy. And we pick them up as part of the air we breathe. One of the important parts of meditation is learning how to sit down and watch what are your assumptions that make you do things that are stressful, harmful, cause suffering. And do you really believe in them? Are they worth believing in? Learn how to question them. One way of questioning them is to put up some alternative perceptions, alternative assumptions. For instance, we tend to think of sensual desire as something glamorous. And so the Buddha has us remember, what, what exactly is it we desire? You look at the object of the desire, especially if it's the body, and you realize that the desire is focusing on only a few aspects. There's a lot that it doesn't want to look into, so you make it look into those things. What's right under the skin? What goes into the body? What comes out of the body? That helps to weaken your focus on the object. And then you can start focusing on the desire itself. And again, we tend to think of the desire as something glamorous something alive. The Buddha provides lots of different perceptions to help you think about it in different ways. The raptor with a little piece of meat in its mouth, and as soon as he gets it, all these other crows and hawks and falcons and whatever, they're going to come and try to steal it away, and if he doesn't let it go, he's going to get killed. Sensual desire is borrowed good. Sensual desire is all kinds of dangerous and unattractive and unappealing things. Because when you look at what it actually does to you, the position it puts you in, and all the trouble you go to to get just that little bit of little bead of honey on the edge of a knife blade, is that really the position you want to be in? So in this way, we work with our perceptions as a means of inducing right view and helping to give rise to that desire, which is such an important part of right effort. So you're changing the, the way the mind labels things, the associations it has with things. And you give yourself something to keep in mind. These are the various uses of perception in the practice. This practice called anupasana, looking for something, keeping tabs on something. In other words, making up your mind that there are certain ways of looking at the world that are really going to be helpful, that have a good effect on the mind. Looking for things in terms of their being inconstant or stressful, not self, unattractive.
and just looking for those features wherever you can find them. This way, as you watch the unskippable states arising and passing, well, you can you can question the, the assumptions that underlie them. Some of these assumptions have never been questioned in your life. So it's going to be a little unsettling, but it's also liberating. That's what the practice is all about, is to question the assumptions we have that make us suffer. And as part of the path, you replace them with other perceptions, some of which you learn from other people and others which others of which you actually notice for yourself. So you don't feel so compelled to keep on suffering. You start noticing what it is that you're doing that's causing the suffering, and you realize it's unnecessary, so you drop it. That's what it comes down to. But you can't do this just in the abstract. You have to watch what's actually going on, and you have to apply these perceptions when you see that they're helpful. To help you question your old ways of doing things. And you can turn it into a new way of doing things. Instead of causing suffering, you can learn how to think in ways and perceive in ways that help lead to the end of suffering. It's the same tools, it's just you're learning how to use them in a, for different ends. Use the body, you use your feelings, you use your perceptions, your fabrications, your consciousness. You convert them into the path. As a John Lee once said, a wise person can get good use out of anything. We're told that the aggregates are, when you cling to them, are the, are the essence of what's stressful, the essence of suffering. So what the Buddha has you do is take these things that are the building blocks for suffering, put them together in a new way. Which means that wisdom is not just knowing about things, it's the kind of knowledge that comes with skill. As you learn to manipulate your experience in a daft way. So keep that in mind. We're here working on a skill. We're not going to obliterate anything. Just taking what we've got and we reconfigure it. Get this mind which is often so obstreperous can become a mind of peace, a mind of concentration, a mind of wisdom. It's basically the same building blocks. You should learn how to use them in a new way.